Thank you guys for joining us on Tooth Be Toad case presentation. As you can see, this is a case for tooth number four to be extracted and implant placed at the same time. First thing you want to do is just make sure that you have adequate uh, elevation. So we're taking the 12B blade and we're going around and we're just getting into the papilla so we can release the papilla. And now we're taking the periosteal elevator and we're elevating properly. You want to try to elevate as much as possible. I mean, not too much, but as, as much as possible so you can then, in the future, you'll see later on, we're going to be able to tuck in our membrane so that we can get that membrane to stay exactly where we want it. And we're going to elevate, good elevation on the buckle and the lingual. And one thing that I started doing is uh, I, I love, love, love using the uh, Luxators. These Luxators are incredible. And if anybody wants to know where I got these Luxators, they're pretty reasonably priced. Just email me on realdentistwithaness at gmail.com and I'll give you and send you the information for where you can get these pretty cheap. The Luxators are meant to be used within the PDL space. So uh, pretty much going... I want to say parallel to the tooth, if not a little more than the 45 degree angle, but you want to try to establish a purchase point. Okay, here's a, where I made a little mistake was this. I actually went into it, started elevating or started using the luxators without getting rid of the granulation. You want to be able to see what you're doing. So I went back in with my rangeurs and I removed all the granulation tissue that was on the surface and, and broken down pieces of uh, tissue and uh, broken down pieces of uh, decayed um, tooth structure. Now you can see that I'm just trying to find some elevation, some purchase point. And again, I'm going parallel to the root surface into the PDL space and I'm switching elevators, I'm uh, luxators, I'm sorry, I'm switching luxators from the, the bigger one to the smaller one. As you can see, I just released it. And now it's loose. Once it gets loose, you really want to make sure that you can elevate it out of there without breaking it. So then I went and grabbed my rangeurs, and sure enough, grabbed it, and it came right out. That's perfect right there. That's exactly how it's supposed to be. Now you'll see the serrated curettes. I get these serrated curettes. They're wonderful for getting rid of granulation tissue. Again, these serrated curettes are amazing for getting rid of granulation tissue. If you want to know where I got it, please let me know and I'll give you the information. And I actually use them sometimes to elevate the um, soft tissue a little more. I know that's not what they're meant to be used for, but it works for me. Whatever you can do to with any instrument that you have, absolutely do that. I, I'm going back in because I noticed that my lingual tissue was not elevated enough. So I'll go back into a peri periosteal elevator to elevate it. Now I'm taking my my hand pieces, my implant hand piece, my drills, and I'm just drilling it and trying to stay within the socket. Remember, you want to be not too buckle and not too lingual. Just try to look to see where, imagine, remember, three-dimensional image. Imagine where the implant is going to end up. But you want to give it the distance between the implant and the buckle plate. You want space between the two. Okay, so you don't want to put the biggest implant in there. And in this case, we put a 4-3 by, uh, by 10, 4-3 by 10 millimeter implant in there. But as you can see, there's still space between the implant and the buckle uh, space. So what we're going to do is we're checking the buckle plate. So what we're doing is checking to make sure that our angulation is correct. And now we're putting on the cover screw. I like to put cover screws. A lot of people put hand abutments under. Either way it works. But this is when I go in there and I just condense my bone within the buccal and the lingual aspects between the buccal plate and the lingual plate and in between my implant. Condense everything. And we have a spoon. And then on the other side, you see the condenser. I love this instrument. If anybody wants to know where I got it, please, please, please let me know. And I'll, uh, again, tell you where I got it from. Then I tuck in my membrane both on the buckle and lingual, and here comes the <laughs> serrated curate again. And I, I'm telling you, I love using this serrated curate. Just, just make my life a little easier. 
So that's exactly what I end up doing. Once everything is nicely tucked in, I take my my Vicryl suture and I begin the process of suturing. The key to any kind of suturing technique, guys, is take big bites. Take big bites. You need at least, I say, two, three millimeters, if not four millimeters um, of a good bite in order to make sure that whenever your patient is healing, the tissue is going to swell, which is going to put tightness and put... Uh, compression on your sutures. Now, don't forget that the suture might actually work its way out a little bit. But if you're taking a big enough bite, the suture will stay exactly where you put it so that it can allow that area to heal beautifully. Figure eight, that's what I like to do. I do figure eight, but I actually add an additional um, uh, suture and technique where I just basically put another one in the middle aspect of the um, socket. I don't know why I do this. I've been doing this for so many years that uh, it just become habit. The figure eight will probably do just fine. But for me, I just like that security of placing another suture so that, hey, my membrane is going to stay there. And I've, I haven't had anybody go, oh, well, you know, the membrane was loose or whatever. No, it stays there. I, I kind you know, I've, I've actually been known to be that guy who places... Maybe more sutures than I need, <laughs> uh, at least according to some of my referring dentists. But it's okay, you know everything is good. I rather it, you know, I rather do a little bit more. The 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 suture and throw technique that I like to use is two two two, where I basically take a after I I'm tying everything down, two reps, uh, going counterclockwise, then clockwise, then back to counterclockwise. Some people like 2-1-2, two, two, which is 2 cl- uh, counterclockwise, 1 clockwise, and then 2 counterclockwise again. Whatever works for you, it's up to you. Everybody is very different. But as you can see right here, again, I take 2, and then I tie it down, hold it down, and then I take another 2 going the other way, and then I tie it down, hold it down, and then 2 more. It's just what I've I've done forever. I don't I couldn't tell you why, but it works for me. And whatever works for you, please continue to do. And then here's the final product. Again, an immediate implant uh placed. Thank you so much for listening. Really appreciate you guys.